before they leave, I want you to know this. Our God is not confined. Our God is not confined, and for too long we have put God in a box. But come on, by hindering Him, by not worshiping, hindering Him, by what songs are being sung, we are hindering the move of God. But I'm here to tell you there is a shift. There is a shift that's about to happen, and that shift is this, that we are called to shake the nation. We are not called just for Valmeyer. We are not called for Illinois. We are called as children of God to shake this nation. I want you to stand with me for the reading of God's word. Musicians, you are free to go. Pastor felt a shift. I feel a shaking. I want you, if you have your Bibles, to go with me to the book of Haggai, chapter number two. If you don't know where Haggai is, get your Bible up and follow along and you'll find it. Haggai, chapter two, and I'm going to be reading in verse one. It says this, in the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shittiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw the temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord. According to the word that I have coveted in with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. For thus saith the Lord of hosts once more, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. I want to talk to you for a moment that I have you on this message. It's time to shake the nation. Uh, you may be seated. Now understand that what we have come to accustom with is how we think church should look like. Come on. We feel that worship should be this way or worship should be that way. But let me tell you something. Worship is not song. Worship is your lifestyle. And there are too many people that are living like the world on the outside and trying to live like the world in the church. But the Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. It is time for the church to be the church. We are the redeemed. We are the chosen. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Now notice he says here in Haggai chapter number 2, he says... In verse number three, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? There are some people who just want God the way they see him. They see God as a convenience and not a necessity. See, many of us only call on God when we're in trouble. Or we only call on God when it's convenient, when we can't handle it. 
There are too many of us that are prideful. There are too many of us that want to be famous on the internet instead of humbling ourselves before Almighty God and saying, God, here am I. Send me a vessel that wants to be used for the glory of Almighty God. We got too many Facebook addicts. We got too many people that are trying to be somebody. If you want to be somebody, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Oh, it's going to get real. Because you see, he says, who among you saw this temple? And many of us think we know how God operates. Come on. Let me tell you something. How God operated when you were young is not how God operates now when you are old. David said, I was young, but now I am old. But one thing I have noticed, he says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. Many of you are wondering about your children. If you would get right with God, your children would line up and be blessed. He says, and notice he says, how do you see it? Now, how do you see it now? Well, I only want to worship God the way that my grandparents worship God. I only want to worship God. So what we do is we end up confining God instead of letting God loose. See, what would happen, church, if we would let God loose? Mm, but many of us are scared to let God loose. You know why? Because many of us would be changed. Many of us would be transformed. You know why we don't want to be changed and transformed? It's because we've become comfortable in our sin. Revival always starts... When men and women of old confess before a holy, righteous, just God. How do you see it now? Well, the young people says, I see it this way. Let me tell you something, young people. If you want to see church the way you want it, then get down on your knees before Almighty God. And you pray, you worship, you fast, you begin to call out and watch the move of God. Many of you want to sit there. You won't change, but you don't want to be the change. Many of you won't change. But you don't want to be the change. Oh, if we had it this way, or we had it this way, if our parents were out of the way. I'm getting real tonight because let me tell you something. God was real with you 2,000 years ago when he sent his son. He says, how do you see it now? Instead, we come to church, and we're, all we're doing is complaining. It's too hot. It's too cold. The old people are doing too much. The young people aren't doing enough. And God's sitting on the throne saying, how long will your stupidity last? Stop your stupidity and start worshiping me. I'm tired of church the way it used to be. That's why we are, let me tell you something. That's why so many of us have so much trouble because we're focusing too much on the trouble than the promises of God. Let me tell you something. We seen a miracle two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Come on, come on, come on. Jason even said, if this isn't real, somebody's going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. 
But why are we so shocked when God moves? We are shocked when God moves because we are so focused on our problems. We're so focused on our chains. We're so focused on what he's not doing or what she's not doing. What are you doing? Notice he says this. In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Now, this is a beautiful wall that was painted. But as much as we love this wall painted, Pastor Jim... God is not confined by a color. He is not confined by a denomination. He is not confined by your past. He is not confined by your guilt. He is not confined by your shame. And he is not confined, youth, by your complacency. He wants to move, but he is such a gentleman that he says, I won't move till you move. And he says in here, notice he says, in comparison, we compare too much. I wish I could play the keyboards like Jake, Chase, and Jamie. But I can't. I wish I could sing like my wife. But I can't. But what I know how to do is worship. What I know how to do is pray. What I know how to do is call on the name of the Lord. Because the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and they are what? Safe. Watch this. In comparison, in comparison, what church you go to? What does it matter? In the early church, they didn't ask what church you went to, they asked, Are you a believer? (laughs) But see, there are too many of us that are acting like we're believers. See, we got too many of us that know how to act. And you know who's paying us? The devil. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of is what? That's what it says. And understand. And then we see on Facebook... We, we, we see little jabs left and right like it's a boxing match. Whose ring are you in, God's or the devil's? Amen. And let me, I'm going to say this. Whether you, whether you like me or not, I don't care. Because I am tired of the children of God acting like spoiled little brats and not standing up becoming true children of God. I'm telling you, we're on Facebook, and everybody knows who you're talking about. And everybody knows who you're not talking about. And then we mask it with, well, God says that he will destroy your enemies. Newsflash, we ain't in Psalms. We in the New Testament. And the Bible says, love your enemies. The Bible says pray for those who despitefully use you. When people are talking against you, stop talking about it. Start praying about it. Well, that's therapy. Let me tell you something. The church is not Dr. Phil. We are not Oprah. We are the church of the redeemed. We are blood washed. 
Notice he says, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Is this not in your eyes as nothing? Is this not in your eyes as nothing? You know, your eyes will see what you want them to see. But too many of our eyes are not on God. Too many of our eyes are on the things of this world. If anybody's got a Bible app, turn to Psalm 27, verse 4. And whoever gets to it first, stand up. Psalm 27 and verse 4. Donna. Hold on. Read, read that. Read that slowly. Stop right there. David is talking and he says, one thing I ask. Laurel, he says, one thing I ask. Many of us are asking God like it's a fast food restaurant. Go on. David said, one thing I desire. He says, nothing else matters. David says, one thing that I ask. He says, let me tell you something. I, I know, and trust me, David was in the palace. He knew what fine things looked like. But David said, one thing I ask. One thing I desire. One thing. There are too many of us that are asking too many things and not desiring that one thing. That one thing is, is God, I want more of you. More today than I did yesterday. So that I can dwell in the house of the Lord for." Forever. One thing is, young people, one thing is, you live this fearless life like there's a tomorrow. Guess what? The Bible says this. What does the Bible say? Anybody know? The Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of itself. Young people, listen to me. I have seen too many young people your age die. I've been to too many young people's funerals. You, you want a leader to be real with you? You want, a, you want somebody that's gonna be, who's going to shoot right with you? I'm telling you right now, I have buried too many young people. I have seen families shaken and torn by young people who thought that what they were doing was awesome because what their young person said and, and what their little clique said. You need to get over that clique and you need to start on your knees before a holy God and serve him. Well, I don't want to be there at church because that person's going to be there. I don't want to be there because if they're going to be there, then it knows that I'm not going to fellowship. Be I've always said this about this church. I have said about this church, it is a Netflix, HBO, Jerry Springer special 101. But what I do see in times of worship is unity. It's almost, church, like we forget who God is when we're not worshiping him. Woo! So what we do is when we worship and the song, what was that song we sung tonight? Show me your glory. Show me your Hey, we got participation. I'm loving this. Show me your glory. And see, what we do is when we ask him to show us his glory, then what we do is we go back and we put on our pride. We put on our jealousy. We put on our resentment. We put on our bitterness. Come on, son. I don't have nobody with me right now. Now, I'm talking about all the things that are messed up. But it gets better. There's always a better after the mess. 
And watch this. He says here, I am with you. In the Old Testament, God was with his people. In the New Testament, Jesus was walking with them. But there came a day where Jesus said, I will not be just with you, but I will be in you. So what I want you to know is that you are a carrier of the most high. Oh, come on, somebody. You are a carrier of Jesus so that when you walk into a room, peace walks with you. When you walk into a room, grace walks in with you. When you walk in a room, healing walks in with you. When you walk into a room, deliverance walks in. When you walk into a room, but many of us walk in and it's pride, it's jealousy, it's envy, and you can see it all over your face. And you know what? Nobody wants to be around you. Because you are a carrier. Let me tell you something. If you ain't carrying Jesus, you're carrying the devil. Come on. See, we don't want to talk about that. See, we want the flowery Jesus stuff. We want in the by and by, in the sweet by and by. Let me tell you something. I'm old school. I really am. I'm young, but I'm old school. I grew up in a church. I grew up in a church that was all about hymns. Ain't nothing wrong with hymns. Amen. Nothing wrong with hymns. There's some great hymns. There's power in the blood. Um, some other songs. And the sweet by and by, I'll fly away. All those songs. Amazing grace. Please do not say a mansion over the hilltop. <laughs> That's an inside joke with Eric and I. I saw the light. But you know what? When I started coming here, I noticed some, um, they don't sing hymns. I was here September 19th, 2021. That was my first Sunday ever walking into this church. And I walked in, greeted a few of you. And I walked in and I sat right there where Erica's purse is and I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, the worship hit, and there was a sound that was different. There was, come on now. There was a sound that was different. Jamie's on the keys. Chase is on the guitar. Singers are up there, and they're singing. I couldn't even tell you what they sung, but what I could tell you is the spirit I felt. See, the problem is, is what we've done is we've decided to leave the spirit at the altar and then we pick up our junk and leave. But you don't know. You don't know how they hurt you. You don't know how your sin hurt Jesus. Ooh, it got quiet. Watch this. He says, I am with you. Then he says, my spirit remains among you. Now, let's take a look at this. Do you know that scientists and, and people that, are, that, are, that do fossils and stuff, do you know that they dedicate their whole life to digging up dirt to find a few bones here and there? For some of us that are in church, that's what we do. We come to the altar and we dig up a little Jesus. Just enough to get him to Monday. And then we say, Lord, I just need to be Wednesday. I just need to get to Wednesday. I need to get to that prayer meeting. Because if I go to that prayer meeting, I'm going to dig up a little Jesus some more. That will hit me till Sunday. Sunday. 
So what we do is we limit Jesus. And the Bible says in the book of Psalms, God says the biggest sin, and, I've, and I read this the other day. I thought the biggest sin, Pastor, was idolatry. It wasn't. Jesus, God said in Psalms, chapter 78, he said, the biggest sin you have done against me is you limited me. Is you have limited me. And many of us, see, there are things, and, I, and I'm using Micah as an example because I can, but that's just the tricks of being a pastor's kid. Um, but, and I let him know because we, we come and, and we, uh, we, we talk and we have conversations and, and he says, I want this, I want this, I want this, and I want this. And I tell him, I says, okay, you want this, but if you can show me this, then I will give you this. I don't give it to him right now. You know why? He has not matured to that level yet. There are too many of us that want more of God, but God says, I can't give you more of me because you have not grown and matured enough to handle who I am. There's only one person in the Bible outside of Jesus and Paul that had more of Jesus than anybody. That was David. How do I know that? David says, thou anointest my head with oil. Somebody finish that for me. He says, my cup runneth over. Amen. But let's talk about that cup for a minute. You know in that cup, some of us look at that cup and we go, huh, I just have a little bit in there. It's fine. Huh. <clears throat> My wife tells me all the time, she says, I don't know why you get a soda. I don't know why you get anything because all you do is waste the last drop. Last half. But it made me think on the way here, how many of us are wasting Jesus? Do you, do you know that we waste the time with Jesus, Donna, when we're worrying? We waste time with Jesus when we are fearful. We waste time with Jesus when, when we allow the things of this world to choke God's word out of us. Now, let me get into shaking the nation here for a moment. He says in here in verse 6, once more I will shake heaven and earth. How is God going to shake heaven and earth when he hears the cry of his people? Right now. There is a nation shaken in Ukraine over an attack of the Russians. If you don't think we are living in the last days, you are highly mistaken. The bear is rising up like the Bible says. But the bear has no defense against the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let the bear eyes, let the monkeys go loose, let everything in between happen. Because I know one thing, there's coming a day when the clouds are going to split. Jesus is going to come and he's going to rest himself in Israel and he will be the king of all kings. We sit there and we go, well, you know. Boy, that Putin, he's a real terror. Biden, he ain't doing nothing. If we had this president, let me tell you something. We don't need a president. We got a king. Yeah. Why are we trying to put a leader? Well, call him what you want. <laughs> Why are we having an individual... 
who we are putting our trust in and going, well, I hope they do this. Like you're a defense secretary. But I have a defense. And I have an offense. And they both have a name. And his name is Jesus. Notice, he says, I will shake heaven and earth. Do you know why God shakes the earth? He shakes the earth to wake his children up. But Pastor Becky, why does he shake heaven? He says, I will shake heaven and earth. We know why he shakes the earth. Why does he shake heaven? Do you know why heaven shakes? That's because revival on earth took place. How do I know that? Because the Bible says when one sinner comes into repentance, the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice. See, I don't know about you, but this nation that I'm talking about is a nation that's coming after God. It's a nation that's going to be hungry for the things of God. It's going to be a nation that's going to pray. It's going to be a nation that will worship. It'll be a nation that will call on the name of the Lord. You know, I work at a bank. And you know, when I've watched four or five people today come to the drive-thru and say, has my tax return came in? Now, you don't know about disappointing faces (laughs) until you tell them their tax money not there and they say wait a minute they told me it's going to be there today and we tell them I'm sorry but it is only there if we see it and so we had several people today say you don't know how much I need that money And Pops, I realized something. We in this nation look at money as our God, then the king of all kings who supplieth every need. So we say, okay, God, I need you to show up. I need that money. You look at God as a vending machine? But notice what he says. I will not just shake the heaven and earth and the sea and dry land. He says, I will shake all nations. I will shake all nations. You want this land healed? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will hear what? Forgive them of their sin, and I will heal their land. See, we want home. I'm going to close on this. We want God to move. That's closing number one. (laughs) You better be careful what you say. Watch this. He says, I will shake the nations. But watch this. I will fill this temple. I will fill this temple with my glory. How many worship, how many times have you heard our pastor come up here and say, the glory is moving, but you are hindering God from moving in your life and in your heart. God will only show up, and he will only show in you how much of God you want him to be. But watch this. 
I will fill. Notice he said, I will fill. I will fill. He says, you don't have to fill it. I will fill it. God says, all I need is an empty vessel that says, God, fill this temple. God, fill me again. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your glory. Fill me with your presence. He says this in verse 9. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. I'm here to prophesy right now that this glory that's coming to this house is going to be greater than the glory that has been. Pastor felt a shifting. I felt the shaking, and this shaking is this. How much of God do you want? I refuse. I refuse Donna to come here anymore. I have sat back, Pastor, too long. I have, let me tell you something, I've got a loud mouth. I can say a lot of things, but I have sat back. But let me tell you something. I am sick and tired. And I mean I am sick and tired of the devil running loose. I am sick and tired of the devil destroying families. I am tired of the devil destroying children. I am sick and tired of the enemy coming in and destroying God's people. He says, who will rise up? Who will rise up? Will it be you? Jamie, will it be you? You know the word. You have quoted it time and time again. You know it. Deacon, you, you said to me you couldn't wait for revival tonight. I watched back there, and I watched Landon worshiping God. But we've got too many young people that care about what their family thinks, cares about what the church thinks. It is time, young people, rise up. Rise up. You want us to fight for you? You got to fight with us. I want my wife to come up here. I'm sick and tired of the devil winning. You don't know how long we have fought for you. You don't know the times we felt like giving up. Yes. Times where we both talked and we said, let's call Jim. But you know what? I see your souls. I see your heart. I see the passion. I see the potential. I see the calling. But more than me and my wife fighting for you, more than Pastor Jim and Becky fighting for you, you got a Savior who died for you. You want camp, you want the camp, you want all of us to fork over money for you to go to camp, show us that you're interested. I hear you. Well, I'm calling things out tonight. I'm, Donna, I'm tired of it. Amy, I'm tired of it. John, I'm tired of it. Billy, I'm tired of it. Because let me tell you something. When all of us are dead and gone, who's going to fight for you? Come on. Come on. Yeah. You don't know how many times. 45 minutes we drive from St. Louis, if not longer, here. Is it because we have to? No. Sometimes, do we not want to? You better believe it. There's sometimes I'm sure Pastor Jim don't want to get up here and preach. 
because of all of the commotion that is met with him Monday through Saturday. See, where I grew up, they let the pastor seek the word of God, and they used the board. And we got too many people, young people. You say, well, you're attacking me. I'm not attacking you at all. What I'm saying is, is I'm looking for some leaders. The first thing that I said when we were at that pit, the very first Wednesday that we took over, I said, what I want out of the young people is I want leaders, not followers. Malachi, as you go, so does the rest of them. Jamie, as you go, so does the rest of them. Jade, as you go, so the rest of them. Matthew, as you go, so does the rest of them. Maybe, maybe it's... Maybe it's that we just need to... Say that's it. Many leaders would. But Becky knows the first thing that I said when we took over was we were not going anywhere. And let me tell you something. As much as we fight, and I'm telling you, we fight, it is like what Harry Pop says, and it's true. It is Monday retirement. But here's the thing. Young people, if nobody's going to fight for you, fight for yourself. If the Bible says if your mother and your father forsake you, the Bible says the Lord will take you in. Look at this. We got the majority of your family. I'm talking grown people standing and you youth are sitting there. Who's going to be a Jeremiah? Who's going to be a weeper that says, Lord, here am I. I'm weeping before you, wanting a move of God. Who's going to be a Daniel? Who's going to pray three times a day and says, no matter what, I'm standing for God. Ladies, who's going to be an Esther? Who's going to rise up and be an Esther? Esther is the only woman that it says this. She was raised up for such a time as this. Who's going to be an Esther? Who's going to be a Hannah? Besides me. But that's why I said Hannah, didn't I? Anna. My, well, you're a Hannah. What am I saying? Who's going to be a Ruth? Let me tell you women about, I want every young woman to stand. Jim, you can stand, you're the pastor. Every young woman stand. I, I'm, I'm here to say every woman should be standing. Amen. Because here's the truth. You know about Ruth for a moment? Ruth, Naomi, who had lost her husband, or husband, lost her sons. Naomi said to Opa, not Oprah, but Opa. And to Naomi and to Ruth, go back into the city where you came. Or but said, guess what? I'll go. But Ruth said, I'm not going anywhere. Ruth says, Naomi, you're wherever you go, I'm gonna go. Your God will be my God. 
And if Ruth would not have stayed, she would have never met her Boaz. I don't know about you, but my Ruth was gazing in the field, and I'm thankful that this Boaz looked in the field and saw my Ruth. Because you know what? Ruth was the poorest of poor. But there was a man. She she was gleaning in a field, Donna. But she didn't know who owned the field. My God. She did not know. I felt that. She didn't know who owned that field. But all she was doing was gleaning for Naomi. And Boaz said... Who is this woman? Who is this woman? And the Bible says, they said, this is Ruth, the daughter of Naomi. Watch this. Boaz said, leave extra for her. My God. Young women, if you would step out. You see all these other ones. I'm not beautiful. I'm not cute. I'm not this. I'm not that. Shut up with the naysayers. Here is what the Bible says. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made by the creator of the world. Stop trying to wear fancy clothes to get men's attention. Be a Ruth. Ruth didn't have any prerogative clothing on. She didn't have any gothic clothing on. She didn't have any type of clothing on. All she had was a worker's heart. Modern day would call it a servant's heart. And Boaz said, don't let her leave, for I will come to her, and she will be my wife. (laughs) She didn't know. She didn't know. She didn't know that when she married Boaz, that some 2,000 years later came a man named Jesus. Young women, sit down. I'm going to close with this on the women. You who are older women, Amy, Patty, Jamie, Donna, Amy, Angie. Sorry, Angie. The Bible says... You are to teach the younger women how to live, how to worship, how to walk with God. Now I want every man to stand up. You are men of God. You are not defined by your past. You are not defined what people say you are. Jason, I want you to come to the front right here. You want to know a miracle worker? You want to know somebody? Let me tell you something. This man used to be in the world. I'm not calling out his sin. I'm not calling out what he used to be. Because this man no longer, that old man no longer lives. See, the problem is, is too many of us are bringing up what somebody used to be. But let me tell you something. I, and I've said it to Erica, I have never met, and I'm saying this in the bottom of my heart, I have never met a more humble man than I've met in you. But what I'm saying is this. 
He's not defined by what he was. This man prayed effortlessly. He prayed time and time again. And look at the miracle that took place. What I'm saying is, you young people, people have told you you're nothing, you're stupid, you're worthless, you're this, you're that. You are not defined by what people say you are. You are defined by who God calls you to be. Where are my men to teach these younger men how to worship, how to pray, how to work? These kids today want YouTube famous. Well, you know how much money I can make. You know what the Bible says? What shall it profit a man if he gains this whole world but loses his soul? Where are the men? Now, I want the church to stand up. We are the church. We are the body. We are the bride of Christ. And I'm asking you tonight, are you willing to break the barrier? Are you willing to come out and say, God, I need you again? I don't care if you're old. I don't care if you're young. If you want the glory again, if you want God to touch you in a miraculous way, if you don't want to come out, go out of there or you don't want to leave here the same that you came in, I want you to hit these altars. Come on. Jesus said, if you will acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my father. He says, but if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. Who's hungry? Who's hungry? Come on, church. I want more of him. I want less of me. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Worship. Worship him. He's moving. your glory Surrender and surrender we Are you hungry down. for him? Are you hungry for him? Are you Show hungry for us him? Your glory. Show Are us you your hungry glory. for a move? Let every burning heart be holy ground Are you hungry for a move of God? Show us your glory Show us your glory and surrender we fall down come on church show us this is preparation glory. 